happen. We're live. Hooray. <laughs> All the way. Okay. This is far. We are Toronto to New Zealand. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. And I have to ask you, so before we start, everybody, this is my friend Jennifer, all the way from New Zealand, who's going to tell us all about the beauty of Profit First, which I'm pretty excited to hear. And we connected because I contacted her about this Profit First program because I was super interested in it. But I have to ask you first, what's the weather like down there? Wow, it's it's summer, so it's pretty nice. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's uh it was minus 18 here yesterday. <laughs> so uh -oh. I'm just gonna soak up some of your warmth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, right? We're swimming every day in the ocean. <gasps> oh my goodness, you're just yeah. killing me right here. <laughs> So Jennifer, I we were just chatting beforehand, but I wanted you like I'll just get you to introduce yourself and tell us about how you got into this profit first. Yeah, lovely. Well, thanks for having me, Heather. So, mm -hmm. um, yes, I came to profit first through implementing it in my own business, which is a global skincare company, um, Core Silver, it's named. And um, basically, I started that company, you know, uh, 13 years ago, and was just growing, 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 like just really doing well on the revenue side. But at the end of every month, when you know I had paid all of the bills to everybody else, there was just never enough left over for me. Right. And you know, several years into it, I'm thinking, what on earth am I doing? I should just go back to my old corporate life. Right. I am not earning enough money for as hard as I'm working here. And um, so I really started becoming a little bit resentful of my business and I was really falling out of love with it. And the, the irony is I'm really good with numbers. Um, you know, I'm not a CPA, but I love accounting. I've always loved accounting. I've loved numbers. And um, so, you know, at graduate school, I was an accounting TA. So I just kept thinking, I should know better, right? Like, I should know better. Right. So why can't I pay myself? Why is this business not, you know, giving me enough cash flow to be able to pay myself? And there's this idea that we can just grow into it. If we just keep growing magically, you know, the profitability will occur. Um, and uh, so I was at, actually at a trade show in Hong Kong and looking at all of these different, you know, really fantastic ingredients and products and trends and just getting really upset because I knew I just didn't have enough cash flow at this point to continue doing product development. Wow. And yeah. And so I was walking around the trade show listening to podcasts because I love podcasts. And um, I heard a, a reference to Profit First by Mike McCallowitz. And I thought, oh, I don't know what that is. Let me go find out about that. And I immediately bought the Audible book, listened to it for the rest of the trade show, had a moment of crying in the hotel room. <laughs> no. Oh, my God, this is so intuitive. <laughs> Why have I not been doing this from the beginning? <laughs> Why doesn't everybody know this, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And um, so I immediately started the, the system, the methodology, and it was just such a game changer for me and my business. And it's and such a good point. Like so many people decide to go into business for themselves to make more to make more money than they make working for someone else. And so many of them end up broke, right? Yeah. Which is yeah. so sad. It is, it is. And in fact, that is um, one of our, you know, that's basically the underlying mission of the Profit First community worldwide is to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty. And so I, I just love that idea because, um, you know, there's a statistic in the Small Business Administration in the States that 83% of small business owners could actually make more money doing the same work for somebody else. Than in their own business. Right. I believe That's that. Okay. Yeah. 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 And so many businesses fail within the first five years because they, I think, not all of them probably go bankrupt, but some of them are going to go bankrupt and some of them make that realization that they could make more money just going and having a job. Yeah. Right. And it's exactly. not as necessarily going to fulfill what they wanted. Like they might not feel as fulfilled, but 
they'll be able to pay their bills, right? And yeah. I love the eradicate poverty, entrepreneurial poverty. Like that's so good. Yeah. And exactly. So I'm in I'm in a, a group called Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise, where we're trying to eradicate all poverty. So yeah. it fits so well. I love it. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And, and you're gonna give us a presentation, yes? I am. I am. So you want me to start that up? Yeah, if you can do that. So I'm just going to poof, yeah. just like that. <laughs> just like that. So so one of the things I just really love about the um, Profit First methodology is you can actually, oops. No, oh, I'll let little... people know as well that they can type uh, questions into their comment box and I'll, we'll see them come up. So if you have right. questions, for sure, ask away questions. All right. Yeah, go ahead. So, um, so yeah, so here's just a few little statistics. So if you are a small business owner and you're just feeling the same way that I did, um, you know, I'm just not making enough money, why can't I get this right? Don't feel ashamed about it. I know a lot of people have shame around their numbers. Um, the thing is you're not alone. So, you know, and the th you're also just this, Teeny tiny group of the world's workforce, 7% of the world's workforce. That's small. Small business owners. So you're really wow. brave and it's just really hard to make it work. So don't feel ashamed if you haven't quite cracked the numbers yet. So um, the next, so I've basically just, I'll skip over this. I'll basically just skip over this slide because um you know really once i started implementing profit first in my own business i really started falling in love with the company again i had become so resentful and yet i felt this um i felt beholden to my customers because the products you know really are fantastic for very very uh, serious skin problems and right. so i just kept thinking i can't go out of business right because I, I felt this, uh, you know, sense of responsibility to my customer base. And yet I just, I had, just a quick ask question. What, yeah. what, what was the skin problems that your company, like what kind of products did they have? I know it's a little yeah. bit off topic, but I'm interested. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so it put silver in it, which is a natural antibacterial. And um, so really bad skin problems like acne, cystic oh. acne eczema psoriasis and um, it just clears it up just very very quickly and you would so, think that'd be super successful right well I yes think. and in fact it was i mean don't get me wrong my revenues that i grew it so quickly my revenues were extraordinary for you know just me sort of bootstrapping it but because of the expense space there was just never mm. enough you know and the growth that i was doing there was enough, never enough cash flow to actually pay myself. Wow. And so that's what was so different. And um, so, yeah, no, it sold in places like Harrods and Harvey Nichols and, uh, you know, beauty editors were, you know, writing about it and it was winning awards. So it was doing very, very successful. Um, and I just think that's really sort of the idea that so many small business owners, they, on the outside, it looks like they're doing really, really well. And, you know, at the family dinners, you know, get togethers or barbecues, people are like, oh, my God, you must just be, you know, absolutely rolling in it. You're just so successful. And yet on the inside, it's like, oh, no, you have no idea. You have no idea. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a secret. Yeah. So... So um, after I implemented it, I then became certified in the methodology. So I now work with other small business owners to help them get to that profitability. And over 300,000 small business owners have actually implemented it worldwide now. So it's becoming a real sort of movement. That's amazing. Yeah. So one of the things that is really at the core of it is just flipping that accounting equation so the accounting equation that we're all taught is sales minus expenses equals profit. Yes. I was a CPA for 15 years. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, our, our tax accountants, their, their job is to really minimize profits, right, to, yeah. to reduce that tax bill. 
And so what we do is we simply flip it around doing sales minus profit equals expenses. And what that does is it makes profit more, you know, predominant in terms of our focus. Um, it also, you know, allows us, and when we say profit, we're talking about setting aside money for taxes, paying yourself, taking a profit distribution, things like that. And so then what's left over is your expenses. Right. And so it actually starts, you know, setting up this idea that profit is a daily habit as opposed to once a year we look at our numbers and go, oh, God, I'm not profitable again. And that so. profit is it's okay to make a profit. Some people try so hard to avoid making a profit because they're worried about taxes. Mm-hmm. And that's the wrong yeah. decision to make. <laughs> yeah. I, I finished um, implementing Profit First with a really lovely client in California just a few weeks ago. And um, she said that one of the biggest aha moments for her was that idea that actually by spending, spending, spending every year to minimise the tax bill, it is kind of nutty in a way. And that, and what, you know, one of the reasons that she would do that and spend on things that she really didn't need um, to just to reduce the tax bill was because she was never setting aside money for taxes in the first place. So right. to all of a sudden have a big tax bill would just be this annual stress, you know, stress inducer. Like, yeah. Where am I, I, get money? Yeah. yeah. I see that too. Yeah. People who don't plan ahead for it. Whew. Yeah. So many yeah. things. So good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, um, so, so, First off, the, you know, the expenses are last, so we're focusing more on the, um, you know, the important things. And we actually work with your existing habits. So this is another thing that I love about Profit First. You actually don't have to learn accounting. You don't have to, even if you do love, you know, know accounting, you don't have to love it. Um, because what we do is we just work with your existing habits. And right. Part of this is based on Parkinson's law, which is just a natural human tendency uh, to use up the resources that are available to us. So whether that's time or money or other resources. So I don't know about you, Heather, but, um, you know, certainly for me at college, you know, I could have a whole term to do a term paper and then I'd write it in the last week. I still do that. I still yeah. do that. It's like I have all this time to do something, but I just wait until. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And it's probably just as good as if you had taken the whole, you know, the whole term to do it. Probably uh, better because I don't overthink of it, overthink yeah. it, right? You just. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so by using, like, really understanding Parkinson's law, what we do is we actually change the way that you set up your bank accounts. So instead of just having one bank account for the business where all of the income comes in and then all of the expenses are paid out of that, what we do is we break it down. And so all of the income comes into one bank account, but then we allocate it out to smaller bank accounts. And so that's the idea that every dollar that comes into your business already has a purpose. So... Some of those small plates are, you know, the um, owner's pay plate, the profit distribution plate, the taxes plate, the sales tax or GST plate. So yeah. we just start setting up these bank accounts and allocate out the, um, you know, on a percentage basis from the income account. And I guess you use, you must use their current business to get an idea of how to send it out into the world. Yeah. Exactly. Or their accounts <laughs> disseminated into their accounts. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, yeah, so we have the small plates idea, so going into the smaller plates. Um, and what that does, you know, the last account that we have is the operating expenses account. And because we've eaten our veggies first, so we've, you know, <laughs> put aside money into those important accounts first, there's the uh, operating expense account then becomes quite small. And so... Um, you know, what we do is work with uh, this, the business owners to make sure that 
there's enough in that operating expense budget to be able to keep running the business, obviously. Yeah, you don't want that stress of not being able to pay your expenses. But I guess they're not tempted to go out and buy a new something, fill in the blank. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And it it just creates that little bit of um, sort of circuit breaker between, you know, spending and and the money coming in and the spending. So it's like, okay, so I've only got this amount of money, you know, this month or this week in my operating expenses account. So how am I going to, you know, spend that? And do I really need that, you know, fill in the blank, as you say? Right. And one of the things we also do is remove temptation. So sort of, you know, keeping up with the dieting analogy. Yeah. the chocolate or the wine or the ice cream out of the house for me the potato <laughs> chips oh no <laughs> i have a special box that i keep chocolate in <laughs> so you <laughs> with a padlock on it <laughs> well i no i can't i no. can't <laughs> yeah. yeah so so what we do is we actually have the business owner set up a couple of really important accounts like the taxes account um at a separate bank that they don't have easy access to. Oh, that's so, smart. So it's like yeah. even harder for them to get at. Exactly, exactly. Because oh. you just want that tax account to just be, you know, building up over the year so that when it comes time to take pay that tax bill, it's so simple. It's just like, oh, the money's there. Brilliant. Um, yeah. So one for me, actually, so this is where, uh, you know, when we work with the small business owners, we very much personalise it to their business and their industry. So for me and my skincare company, one of the no temptations bank accounts I have is actually for inventory purchases. So, you know, that used to stress me out big time. Um, right. And every time I'd have to place a purchase order with, with the factory and um or you know buy the ingredients and um it was just always a stress moment whereas now every single week when i do my allocations some money goes o- over to that account and then no temptations bank and so now when i place uh you know when i buy ingredients and place that purchase order with the factory it's just so simple so the money's there it just goes which is it's- so nice right lovely yeah because those are probably big invoices <laughs> they are yeah, of dollars. <laughs> so and then another idea that a lot of people use it, um those accounts for is seeing if the existing business can support future growth so i'm working with a client at the moment where we've set up an account for future employees so oh, wow. she yeah, she thinks that she um, needs, you know, this particular uh, person to come in to her company. To There's some roles that she would like to be able to hire somebody. But we're running the, the financials and the allocations um, on that person for a couple of months just to see whether the existing business can support actually bringing that person in. Kind and of as if, kind of as, as if they were pretending they were there and just, oh, yeah, that's you, smart. You got it, yeah. And so that way, you know, so so many small business owners just think, oh my gosh, I'm growing so much and there's not enough hours in the day. I'm going to hire this person, but actually, can the existing business support that? Right. Um, so you know, by hiring too quickly. Uh, that can create all sorts of stress again around, you know, profitability. And basically so many small business owners hire at the expense of paying themselves. Right. Which yeah. is, again, the wrong way around. Right. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> They're probably, your employees are making more than you. There's something wrong. <laughs> that's right. And that's definitely what was happening in my business. Oh, so, my goodness. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. So, um, and another one that I do in my business, uh, so similarly to the the idea of the hiring a person, um, is the new product development. So every every week when I do my allocations, I have an account for new product development, um, because that was another one that used to get me in trouble. I, you know, sort of think, okay, I need to now bring out a new product, 
um, and it was always stressful, again, like to actually come up with the funds to do that. So now I just do that allocation every week and I don't, I start working on the concepts and so forth, right. but I don't actually launch it until I've got that money in the bank account. So you can walk around trade shows stress-free. You got it. You got right? It. I <laughs> no more. Go back to my hotel room in tears. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've got this. I'm good. That's awesome. Yeah. And you so, do it every single week. You do allocations. Well, so yeah. So that's the um, the third one around uh, the last one around establishing a rhythm. So oh, okay. uh, keeping up with the the dieting analogy instead of like you know starving and then binging and so on. What we do is we just establish a rhythm. So um, quite often people, and I work with companies to figure out what's right for them. For me, I do mine every Friday. Um, as I said, I, I really like numbers, so I just catch up on my bookkeeping and then do my allocations on Friday. And it's I try relaxing. to tell people it's interesting, but nobody ever believes me. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> So um, a lot of companies do it every two, uh, you know, twice a month and some companies are smaller, uh, quite a small percentage do it once a month um, because what we don't want to have happen is, you know, that, that income account growing too much and then, you know, the other account sort of falling behind. So establishing that rhythm, whether it's weekly or twice a month, seems to be ideal and for months. Probably time. more often would feel less painful because I know so I I do my own as an accountant right I do tax allocations into other accounts for myself mm -hmm. and if I leave it too long and it feels like a big number that I'm moving I was like oh that's kind of painful or if but you do it every week it's not as painful so that's right just yeah. drop it in right yeah. exactly exactly <laughs> and the other thing I like about doing it weekly and on a Friday is it's sort of, you know, very tangible. Like you're just, as small business owners, we're just like working, working, working in our business all week long, right? And so by doing those allocations on a Friday, it's a little bit of a tangible reward. Like, yeah, no, what I'm doing is actually paying off. And you pay yourself every Friday. You do, you do. Exactly. That's amazing. Yeah. So... So this is, um, so one of the things that a lot of people get tripped up on is, okay, so I understand the concept. It, it seems, you know, very intuitive, um, but what actually are my percentages? And right. so what we have done across, you know, looking across industries, across company size, across geographies, these are the percentages that we've actually come up with as, um, you know, Profit First Community. And these are target percentages. So if you're a solopreneur, for example, and you're, you know, you're just getting started um, and you fall into column A, what you should be doing is actually paying yourself 50% of every, you know, dollar that comes into the business. I don't know anybody who does that. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so and then as you grow so for example I'm working with a company at the moment who falls into column D um, and so what we're doing uh, she needs to be setting aside 10% of her own of for owner's pay and then 10% for her profit distribution yeah and, I guess as a, as your income grows you don't have to take on a percentage basis as much right yeah, exactly. And to support that, you know, when you get to a certain size, you do need more people in the business to, oh, to yeah. be supporting you. So those operating expenses do go up. Yeah. Right. Oh, wow. That's very cool. Yeah. So you used, so they did a survey of like a whole wide range of businesses and they just came up with these kind of general. So you said it was a target. So I guess... If yeah. they're not starting there, you, you they start to try to work towards this kind of percentages. Exactly. And so what we do is we, um, you know, we figure out what your current percentages are, uh, you know, sort of, and what you're actually doing in terms of cash allocations today. So we'll, we'll actually look at all of your company financials to help you do that. 
Um, and then we set up a rollout plan. So very rarely does somebody actually start at these percentages. Right. Yeah. So well, we, as the stats we talked about earlier, that's not surprising, right? <laughs> yeah, you've got it, you've got it. And so, you know, and we don't want you to, like a lot of people get really excited and they start, you know, a little bit too aggressively. So let's say they're in column B, they might, might start, well, I can get to 30% owner's pay right away. And and then they falter and then they think, oh, well, the system doesn't work. Well, right. no, what we want you to do is just start very, very slowly. So I've got a, a um, client that I'm, you know, still working with. So when they came to me, they were in column C. Um, but they had, you know, over the last four years, they had wrapped up like, you know, seven figure losses, basically. Wow. I know. It was, and so they they were a little bit skeptical. One of the business partners was a little skeptical whether this would work. And um, what it does, Heather, is because of, you know, sort of having a look at this and saying, okay, well, operating expenses needs to be, this is our target for operating expenses. It really causes you to step back and say, okay, what's working, what's not working? Where can I cut fat in the company without eating into the muscle of the company? Right. And so they, in the, you know, in the six weeks that I worked with them to implement profit first, they went from these hideous losses to much smaller losses, like, you know, four for the losses as opposed to what they had been doing. And now they've been running it for about three months at this point, and now they're actually at break even. So, oh, wow, good. Yeah, it's amazing. And and what they're doing is, um, that, was, that was so funny. So we just started by putting 1% into their profit account and 2% into the owner's pay account. That's where we started. Right. And um, so, you know, so I was touching base with them a couple of weeks into it and um, they were so proud of showing me their owner's pay account and they're like, we can go out to dinner. Yeah, right. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> so, so small the, victories. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the point is they're on the track and um, they said to me, you know, it's the first time in four years that we actually feel like our company has a chance of success. Wow. And the first time we've actually felt in control of the company finances. That's amazing. So it's, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. So um, another thing, and I'll just, I'll just sort of finish up with this one because I just love this concept. Another thing that I work with companies on, business owners on, is, well, how big does the company need to be anyway? Uh, because, you know, we just start these companies and think we need to grow, 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 grow right. without because, you know, that's what society tells us. But without really thinking through, well, how how much money do I actually really need in my life? And so what we do is we work out, and this is where it's like it, it just really fits in with a lot of the work that you do, is really thinking through, okay, well, what is that, you know, personal budget? What are those needs? And then reverse engineer out. Well, therefore, if I'm taking this much out in my owner's pay, I then have to have a company that's X size. Oh, yeah, so just it's, calculate it backwards. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So this was such a, a source of comfort for me when I implemented Profit First in my company, because as I said, you know, I had grown it to be this global company. Right. Um, I wasn't paying myself. And so what I realized was, so I sat down and, you know, did some visualization on, okay, well, what do I really want in my life? And therefore, how much is that going to cost? And therefore, using the Profit First percentages, this is how big the company needs to be. And the surprising thing to me was it was actually smaller than it was. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, so I, I made a bunch of changes. I, you know, got out of a couple of markets that were barely profitable and were just taking up too much time. So I um, left Japan. I left Russia. 
uh, and to not, not me personally, my products um, yeah. pulled out of those markets and I cut off some of the, um, you know, some of the products that were not doing so well. Well, so, that's a really good way to take a step back from your company and take the attachment to being this big thing out of it and go, well, I don't need that. And it's not making enough money. So yeah, exactly. And now, um, now that I've got, you know, that stability and, and I'm in love with the company again, now I'm slowly starting to grow, but I'm growing in a different way. So amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's so good. Yeah. So I just love this module that we do. Um, we do this sort of, you know, towards the end of the course after they've already set up all of their, um, you know, profit first system, we start having these conversations as well. So. Wow, so that's then, amazing. Ah, yeah, so that's it. It's a simple system. It's very intuitive, um, but it is, and that simplicity really is, it's genius. So. Well, and I think because it changes the way you think of it instead of our traditional, you know, grow, 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 don't pay any taxes. Yeah. Like, because it just changes your way of thinking of it, it just switches the whole thing around. Yeah. Yeah. I like your, I wish I had done this sooner. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, I, I, that was my thought, and that's what I just hear time and time again from small business owners. Yeah. Amazing. And then, okay, is, it, is that the end of the presentation? Uh, yeah, there's just a little bit. There we go. That's how they find me. Yeah. Oh, yes. The where to find Jennifer. Wow, you're everywhere. <laughs> I feel like social media world, you have to be everywhere, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to switch over here and you, I'm going to post in the comments that link for us and you can let us know what this link is. There we go. So I just posted your lovely so um so for uh your your community heather so i uh, i would love to work with you guys on a group basis and um, what we're going to do is actually work through all of the modules and implement profit first in your company and and the businesses in just eight weeks and so what we're going to do is each week um there will be a module that you will work through with videos and so forth um, but then also once a week, a live coaching call where you get all of your questions answered. Oh, and so there's like a self-study and then. Exactly, exactly. So we've got workbooks for each week. Um, we do a little bit of mindset work as well as the actual mechanics and the analytics of profit first. And by the end of the eight weeks, uh, each of the business owners will have fully implemented profit first in their business and be off and running. So and it's, start paying themselves. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's so good. So yeah, I highly recommend. I mean, I have uh, listened to the audio book, the profit first. Now he has a new one, doesn't he? Do we this next. Cool. Fix this next. Yeah. Fix this next. Yeah. So I first stumbled across him, and I can't even remember how I found out about him. I must have been like you, heard him referred to in a podcast, because I'm a big podcast junkie. And I went and listened to the audiobook, and I thought, this is fascinating. And then you and I were in a group coaching call in another group, and you were talking about it. I said, I need to talk to Jennifer. <laughs> so that's how we connected. Because yeah. I mean, the more I read about it, the more I hear about it, I think it's a brilliant concept and so simple to apply. Like we, like you said, you don't have to be an accountant, right? No, no. I mean, numbers are interesting, you guys, seriously. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, trying to convince, I'm trying to convince them every week. So I do a, a video every single week where I try to, you know, convince them that it's important information. Yeah. But I know yeah. it's not for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, so at the end of eight weeks, they have implemented the whole program and then they just carry on and exactly. keep following the process. And yeah. like, do they have the 
because you were saying they don't start out at exactly that the, those percentages. So do they plot out a plan to get to that percentage? Yes. So we'll work on a rollout plan, um, and uh, and and I can also work one on one with people uh, when it comes time to really sort of having a look at their financials, right? And that profit assessment, so that then we can work out what the current percentages are. And then where they need to get to, and in, in terms of the target percentages and how to get there. So, Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And we do things like um, going into so once you've done the profit assessment, so then having a look at the profit drivers in the business and coming up with ways of actually slashing some of those, you know, the fat in the business. Without, right. Cutting the muscle, yeah. The, thing, the things you don't really need in the business. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not seeing any questions come in. Everybody's just so quiet and just so fascinated. But um, is there anything else that we want to? Is there, is there anything else we want you wanted to cover? I think that's it. I just, okay. um, you know, I just, I, I work with, uh, you know, companies all around the world. So even mm -hmm. though I'm Zealand, you know, with today's technology. Um, I work with companies all over. I even work with somebody over in Europe. That was a little tricky in the time zone. But right. people in North America, not a problem at all. And uh, and I would just love to get started with some of your peeps. Right. Yes. That'd be amazing. I yeah. highly recommend it because I'm, you know, I find this uh, program amazing. And it's like you said, why didn't anybody tell us this before? Like, and because I went through the accounting process, like I was trained traditionally as an accountant, I have the old way drilled into my head. And when Michael flipped it upside down, I was like, of course, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's just such a good program. So yeah. I, since I don't see any questions, there's a little bit of a delay, but yes, the world is small. I mean, I'm in Toronto here in New Zealand. Yeah. I'm yeah. the same as you. I have a client in Australia. They're, they're, the world is small now, so anywhere, yes. you can yeah. reach almost anywhere. Yeah, but I want to thank you so much for getting up early and taking some time to share this program. It's an amazing program, and I think people will really benefit. Yeah. Thank, so you, thank you so much. All right, everybody. Have a beautiful day. If you just tuned in, go back and watch the recording. <laughs>